Thanks for joining me today. Today's video is not necessarily about coffee roasting as much as it is about coffee tasting and pairing. And I'm gonna share with you my favorite pairing for coffee. So stick around. All right, thanks for joining me today. Welcome to the Virtual Coffee Lab. Normally I'm talking about coffee roasting and helping you guys uh, go through that experience. I'm going through the journey of learning how to roast coffee, but this is a little different. Um, when I drink coffee and I'm with friends and I'm especially um, having a, a very good coffee, I love to have some sort of a coffee pairing, something to snack on while I drink my coffee. And many of you probably do the same thing and we just haven't talked about it. So today I wanted to share with you my all-time favorite pairing. Some of you may have heard of this, many of you probably haven't, um, but it's something that has impacted my coffee experience and I want to share that with you. So let me introduce you to my favorite pairing which is the Queen Amman. This pastry has added so much to my coffee drinking experience that I wanted to share it with you. Now this might seem silly and uh, you might think, well, that's ridiculous, but I, I wanna tell you, have you heard of the Queen Amon before? It's spelled K-O-U-I-G-N, A-M-M-A-N. It's also known as a Brittany pastry, there's places that have made, I'll call them cheap imitations of a Brittany pastry. Um, there's even some food chains that have done it for some of their baked goods, but it's not like the real thing. This is basically like a croissant. Uh, it's a layered pastry, but it has uh, some sugar on it. And the beauty of eating the Queen Amman with coffee is that the experience of of eating it is it's really fun because you can peel this because it's a layered pastry you can peel this and you get these really interesting layers that you can that you can peel off and you'll be able to see some of the layering here in this pastry that I've already started eating so it's butter and sugar and if you don't like butter or sugar then you won't like the Queen Amman but it's been a delicious pastry. It's so delicious that I remember where I've had it. This elusive pastry uh, it can't just be found anywhere. You can't just go to a store and buy a Queen Amon. Uh, not many people provide them or offer them, sell them, because they take a lot of time to make. Um, the quickest you're gonna be able to make something like this is three hours, but sometimes it can take five hours to make a Queen Amon. Um, so you may be fortunate and have a, a, what I'll call a very good quality bakery that will make pastries like this. And if you do, I would encourage you to try it, give it an opportunity. The Queen of Man, uh, because of its savory, because there is a little bit of salt in it too, there's a savory and a sweetness to go along with the coffee, um, just is really enjoyable. And one of the neat things about the Queen Amman is that the further you get down eating this, the further you go down as you peel away these layers, the sweeter it gets because the sugar seems to melt a little bit and kind of settle at the bottom. And the bottom is the last thing that I eat. That's kind of my special treat. And again, I know this is kind of geeking out a little bit on, on uh, snacks or pastries or pairings, but uh, this is just a really fun and interesting uh, pastry or a pairing to have. I remember the first one that I had. I was down in Florida, Jacksonville, Florida at Bold Bean. I remember having that experience with the coffee. They make some great coffee down there. Um, and I, that's the first time I had a Queen Amon. I also remember experiencing a Queen Amon at uh, when I was in Minneapolis at the Mill City Roaster uh, training that I went through. 
called Spy House, Spy House Coffee. And they didn't make the Queen Amon. They had it made by a place called the um, Black Walnut Bakery or something like that that is in downtown Minneapolis. But it's just a wonderful pastry to enjoy. You can peel off layers of it at a time, little pieces of it, and enjoy it. And I would encourage you to um, give it a try and leave your comments. So I'm wondering with you and, and your coffee pairings, what makes a pairing special with the coffee that you drink? Do you have different types of pairings for different types of coffee? For me, I, I could have the Queen Amon with every type of coffee I have. There are videos online that can show you how to make Queen Amons, and it might be fun just to go look and watch and see what all is involved. That might be one of the reasons why they're a little difficult to find is because they're a pain to make. They're not easy to, to make and they take time. So if you happen to find them at your local bakery, or confectionery, then I would definitely take the opportunity to, to check them out and experience that for yourself. There are different ways to make these Queen Amans. Uh, there are variations. This one here happens to have a round bottom, and it does make a little bit of a difference on where the sugar settles. Um, I'm getting a little picky here. Also, depending upon how the baker has done their layering, the layers can be more defined and easier to peel, or it can become a little less, a little more difficult to try to peel the Queen Amon and have these little layers as you're enjoying your coffee. There's always a uh, like four peaks that are built into the baking of the Queen Amon, so the tops will be browner, more brown, and. Um, sometimes you don't see the sugar caked on. So in this Queen Amon, you'll actually see the sugar kind of packed on here. And that's okay. If some people will just, um, as they're preparing this for baking, just before they bake it, they'll sprinkle it on. And then the top actually gets kind of this glazed look. But some bakers will actually... Um, hold back and not do that step, they'll actually sprinkle it or roll it later after it comes out of the oven, maybe even if it's a little warm, to have some of that sugar melt onto it. It's not a total sugar bomb. Um, it is not, uh, it's not anything like eating something super, super sugary, but it is sweet um, and it is buttery and it is delicious. You guys, coffee is an experience. And roasting coffee is um, just one element. Tasting it is the other, and in fellowship or enjoying the time with friends while you have coffee is just as fun. But when you put it all together and you're sitting in a coffee house or you're at home sharing great coffee with your family and friends, and then you have a snack or a pairing like this, it doesn't get any better than that. Thank you for joining me today and watching this video. If you like what you saw, I would encourage you to hit the like button that tells YouTube that uh, something good's going on here on this channel and you like this video and they will show more of my videos to home roasters like you. And if you would like to subscribe to this channel, that would be awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. That helps me out. And most importantly, if you want to be notified when videos are uploaded, hit that bell and um, when new videos are uploaded, you'll be the first to know. So thanks for joining me today. Again, leave your comments, share your thoughts on this video and your experience with pairings and or the Queen Amon. And we will see you next week here at the Virtual Coffee Lab.